So praise and worship, uh, uh, your posture, you can stand, you can sit. You want to kneel if you are prompted to, okay. You can clap your hands. Uh, clap your hands during the fast song. Uh. Slow song, don't clap. Uh. A bit weird. Uh. Uh, but the, the, the fast songs, clap your hands. Uh. Okay. Um, you can uh, shake your body a little bit, uh, but not too violently. Uh. Okay. Uh, the, the idea is this. Uh, let everything that lives and that breathes give praise to God. So we are living and breathing. Amen? Amen. So we give praise to God. Amen? Amen. Okay, very good. So now let's just spend some time of silence to prepare ourselves before we begin. So yesterday and the day before, we learned about uh, unity, being one with each other, oneness and unity and communion. So being one in Jesus Christ, in the Holy Family Church, let's turn to each other, let's give a warm smile, say hello, good evening, praise the Lord, say Christ is risen. Amen, okay. So uh, let's all stand, let's all stand. We can begin now, let's all stand. The psalmist says in Psalm 118, Psalm 118, he says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. For He is what? Good. That's it. For He is what? Good. For His love endures forever. forever. Indeed, God's love endures forever. His mercy and favour is with us forever. So let's declare, truly, God's love endures forever. As we sing our first song, Forever. Let's all clap our hands now. Let's go. Give thanks to the Lord our God and King. His love and just forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love and
clap offering. We praise and thank you, Lord, for you are great and glorious, mighty and wonderfully strong. God is great, great in power. Our next song, Great in Power. Praise Him, you heavens and all that's above. Praise Him, you angels and heavenly hosts. Lamb of Hola. Praise Him. Praise Him, sun, moon, and bright shining stars. Praise Him, the sun, moon, and bright shining stars. Praise Him, you heavens and waters and skies. other and say, God is great. Can we turn to each other and say, God is great. <laughs> say again, God is mighty. God is glorious. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wow. I'm not going to stop yet. Huh? So, uh, let's continue our next song. Our next song is a beautiful song called Hear Our Praises and it's about community joining together praising God and asking the Lord to fill our homes with dancing, fill our streets with joy, fill our church with the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Okay, with that in mind, let us lift our voices to praise the Lord. Hear our praises.
singing fill the air let the whole world hear what we are declaring give thanks to the lord for he is Good. for his love and yours hallelujah praise the lord you can continue standing or you can sit down here's when we take the worship down the the, the, the prayer down to a more gentle worshipful time so you can sit you can stand if you want but we just want to right now as we slow the pace down, as we come into a time of deep worship, we want to quieten our hearts. Quieten our hearts before the Lord Jesus, who is here in our midst. The risen Christ stands in our midst. In the sacrament, in the tabernacle, in the community, and as he stands in our midst, he speaks to us as he did to his apostles on that first Easter. Peace be with you.
the Lord wants to fill us with peace. He wants to calm every fear, every anxiety in our hearts. He wants to comfort and console us. He wants to lift us up. He wants to love us as only God can love us with an everlasting love. So tonight, our response to Jesus in our midst is what St. Thomas said, my Lord and my God, I'm here to worship you to praise you, to adore you, to thank you. Beyond the music, the singing, the clapping, beyond all that is the heart, our heart, made by you, God, made for you. And our heart now surges forward with love, adoration and praises to worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply
Sing out to Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Worship the Lord Jesus. It's all about you. coming back, Lord. I'm coming back to the Lord of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I hated. When it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Let's all close our eyes now. Let's all close our eyes as our heart bursts forth to the Lord Jesus with praises, adoration, thanksgiving. Lord Jesus, tonight, we're so grateful that you have drawn us to your presence. You have called us here, Lord, to worship you with all our hearts to forget about ourselves and to look only at you, to behold your beauty, your holiness. We worship you, Jesus, and as we worship you, Lord, help us, help us to see more of your love, your grace, your strength in our lives, more of your help, your presence, your guiding hand, more of the direction that the Holy Spirit gives to us as we worship you, as we adore you and glorify you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to make our worship not just a church thing, but let our worship be one of witness, a one of testimony, a one of declaring that you are alive, one of telling people that truly indeed Jesus, you are Lord as we worship you.
with all our hearts worship the Lord. As we worship. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. As we Sing with me. Call on Jesus together. Jesus, Jesus. Lift your voices. Jesus. As we Sing with me. Jesus, Jesus. Call on Jesus, the name by which we all say. As we worship. Jesus, Jesus. As we bow, and as we bow in adoration and stand in reverence, oh, show your majesty and glory, let your anointing fall. As we declare your name, Lord Jesus, as the only name who saves, may your power. Lord Jesus, with all our hearts we worship you. We thank you, Lord, for breathing on us your Holy Spirit. Tonight we want to surrender and yield to your Holy Spirit. We want this breath of God to enliven us transform us, empower us, and strengthen us. So with all our hearts, we look to Jesus. We open our hearts to the Holy Spirit and cry out to the Holy Spirit, breathe on me, Lord, breathe on me, your breath of life. Come, Holy Spirit, breathe on me.
glory and praise to the most blessed trinity for this time of true worship in spirit and in truth as we pray glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen praise the lord everyone so folks i think we're all ready to celebrate this eucharist with great joy and thanksgiving right yes yes yes, yes. Yes? yes. Okay, so let's all stand and loudly declare, cry out to God, send us your spirit. So today, my dear brothers and sisters, we welcome Father Valerian, who needs no introduction, the son of the parish. We welcome him today to celebrate with us. Thank you. Thank you, Father Adrian. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters. I'm very glad to be back here to celebrate this Eucharist and prepare ourselves for this Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit this Sunday. Let us begin together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, how many of you like comedy? Oh, you're quite a solemn bunch. <laughs> Why well, I'm asking you this is because today we celebrate the memorial of St. Philip Neri. And he's a patron saint of comedians because he was known for his joy. He was known to bring about a cheer to people who were down. Even in his own penance at confession, he brought a smile to the penitent's face. And so this evening, as we prepare ourselves on this third day, the triduum of our preparation for the coming of the Holy Spirit, we call to mind the times in our lives when we have failed to exude joy and laughter and happiness to those around us. For the times we did not bring about the mercy of God, the love of God to one another, let us now be heartily sorry. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have really sinned in my heart. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let 
us pray. O God, who never ceased to bestow the glory of holiness on the faithful servants you raise up for yourself, graciously grant that the Holy Spirit may kindle in us that fire which, with which he wonderfully filled the heart of St. Philip Neri. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea and paid their respects to Festus. Their visit lasted several days, and Festus put Paul's case before the king. There is a man here, he said, whom Felix left behind in custody. And while I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and elders of the Jews laid information against him, demanding his condemnation. But I told them that Romans are not in the habit of surrendering any man until the accused confronts his accusers and is given an opportunity to defend himself against the charge. So they came here with me, and I wasted no time, but took my seat on the tribunal the very next day and had the man brought in. When confronted with him, his accusers did not charge him with any of the crimes I had expected, but they had some argument or other with him about their own religion and about a dead man called Jesus, whom Paul alleged to be alive. Not feeling qualified to deal with questions of this kind, I asked him if he would be willing to go to Jerusalem to be tried there on this issue. But Paul put in an appeal for his case to be reserved for the judgment of the august emperor. So I ordered him to be remanded until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. set his way in heaven. The Lord has set his way in heaven. My soul, give thanks to the Lord. All my being, bless his holy name. My soul, give thanks to the Lord. Never forget all his blessings. The Lord has set his seed in heaven. Bless the heavens are high above the earth. So strong is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. The Lord has set his swing in heaven. 
O Lord, as set his sway in heaven, and his kingdom is ruling over all. Give thanks to the Lord, all his angels, mighty in power, fulfilling his word. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus showed himself to his disciples, and after they had eaten, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Look after my sheep. Then he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was upset that he asked him the third time, Do you love me? and said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. I tell you most solemnly, when you were young, you put on your own belt and walked where you liked. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and somebody else will put a belt around you and take you where you would rather not go. In these words, he indicated the kind of death by which Peter would give glory to God. After this, he said, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, if Jesus were to ask you right now, do you love me? What would your response be? Yes, some don't know. <laughs> some dare not answer, right? What really is our response? Because theoretically in our minds, we will say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, like Peter. Everything you do, yes, Lord, I will do it for you. But do we realize or do we recognize what is entailed when we respond to him in the affirmative? There are many things that are required of the disciple. Lots of sacrifices. In fact, Jesus even gives a rundown to Peter of what will happen to him. I tell you solemnly, when you are young, you put on your own belt and walk where you liked. You are free to do what you wanted to do. You can because you are young. Everything is in your world, the world is in your hands. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and somebody else will put a belt round you. In other words, when you grow old, Peter, uh, Jesus was telling Peter, that you will be dependent on other people. How many of us can realize that and identify that? How many of us who have got elderly family members realize that they need our help? Right? Some of us are here answering and some of us know what is going on. For me, in my mind, I think of Monsignor Lau. He comes to the seminary to teach our seminarians, Oswin was one of them, on Monday's Latin. And once he 
alights the car, the seminarian will be ready to push him on a wheelchair. And he moves along happily because he knows he's in good hands. He likes to be pushed around, in other words. <laughs> but more importantly, my dear brothers and sisters, when we grow old, as Jesus would tell Peter, you'll be taken to places where you would rather not go. What does this mean? Because we profess that we love Him, are we prepared to let Him lead us in our lives? We, some of us will say yes. But then when the, time, the, uh, when the time comes, you'll say, Father, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure whether I'm making the right decision. Oh Lord Jesus, show me the way. I'm fearful. That's why I ask you again, if Jesus says, do you love me? Sometimes you've got to think and say, yes, or I'm not sure, because it entails a certain kind of responsibility. What sort of responsibility? Look at Paul in our first reading. You, if you have been following the readings of this past two, three days, you'll see that Paul was asked to go on a greater mission. The Spirit spoke to him and said, I want you to move out of Jerusalem, out of Samaria, and go all the way to Rome. Why? Because the Spirit of God was making use of Paul, and Paul himself has te testified that he loved God. And because he loved God so much, the Lord brought him to places, brought him all the way to the center of the Roman Empire to do what? For a holiday? To be prepared for his death. But before his death, he was brought to the center of the Roman Empire to testify to Caesar about the goodness and the greatness of this magnificent God. Prior to that, he faced challenges. Today's first reading is one classic case of his challenge. He was imprisoned in Caesarea. Now, this is a different Caesarea from Caesarea Philippi. This is the Caesarea Maritima the, on the borders of the Mediterranean Sea. He was imprisoned there, and there was this thing going on with the authorities, King Agrippa and Bernice, who were meeting Festus. But what was relevant for us to note, dear brothers and sisters, was as he was held behind custody, they were discussing about his fate and recognize what was going on. Because he loved the Lord so much, the authorities, the civil authorities, did not do anything with him. In fact, they said, I don't know what was the argument with these people, because Festus, Agrippa, and all were not... Um, believers. They said they are discussing about or debating about or arguing about some religious matters. Let us not get involved with this, they discussed. In other words, the Spirit was working even through the civil authorities not to condemn Paul, but rather to allow him to have audience with Caesar. And that is what happens when we devote ourselves to working in God's kingdom. That's what happens when we serve the Lord in all that we do. Even though how antagonistic the world around us can be, the Lord is always protecting us. And why am I saying this, my dear brothers and sisters? Because I have a personal testimony of just few, two, three days ago. I have just ended a retreat for all our archdiocesan officers, about a hundred of them at CSC, and it just came out this afternoon. On Wednesday, when we started off, I gave the first session in the morning about being tempted, about temptations, about how the evil spirit will camouflage itself and influence us and try to distract us from our main goal of loving the Lord. Innocently, I just shared with classic examples I had experienced over the past few weeks. And there was that. The day went on, in the evening, everybody was dismissed, but the core team and myself were having a debrief. It ended up about 6.40 p.m., I went to my car, I couldn't start the car. I tried it again, I couldn't. I called whoever was around to say, you know anybody with a whatever jumped, what do you call that thing, that plug thing? But it wasn't a case of that jump, plug, whatever you call it. It was not even a flat battery. I called AA and they said, ignite your engine again, let me hear. So I put it across and they said, it's not a flat battery. But he says, if it doesn't work after 15 minutes, let it rest first, and after 15 minutes, try again. If it doesn't work, we need to tow your car. Okay? So I left it as that. After 15 minutes, I couldn't start the car. But lo and behold, your staff, Christopher, are you here, Chris, the one who's working here? He happened to be preparing to say the rosary at CSC. And he heard about my plight and said, Father Nemeran, I'll send you back from Aukang all the way to Upper Bukit Timah. I said, no, I don't want to trouble you. He said, never mind, I'll send you. 
But along the way, I realized something was disturbing me. Was it because, I thought to myself, was it because I had shared about opposing forces to all the church workers in the morning? I was rather disturbed. I went back. I had to rush back. That's why Christopher sent me back because I had an appointment in the office about 8.15. After the appointment, I even missed dinner. But it's okay, some of the seminarians kept for me some food. I had my dinner about 9 plus. And I was still troubled. And I recalled, I began to reread re the gospel passage of Wednesday. And in that passage, Jesus prayed. And Jesus said, I will pray that you be protected from the evil one. He says, Holy Father, I pray for the world. I pray not only for the world, but I pray for those you have given me, that they be protected from the evil one. Those words gave me so much consolation. I was able to go back, I was able to go to sleep, rested. And the next day, I started off the next session on Thursday, telling all the present about what was happening. Many sensed something was not right. When the tow truck came, in fact, I was in anxiety because I was saying if the tow truck comes and I'm in the midst of uh, giving a session, if I'm in the midst of having adoration, how am I going to go up and down? So I delegated to somebody else there, Father Terence was there, and he, he helped me to see to it. When the tow truck driver came, he ignited the car and it worked. I was saying what's going on, right? But I saw that there was a distraction it was a temptation to make me get disoriented because I was addressing church workers. And addressing church workers, my dear brothers and sisters, it's not, not only the hundred of them, but those who, or, or whoever else they were ministering to. And when I heard that, I said, something is not right. But I felt a sense of uneasiness. But the words of Christ that He's praying for us to be protected from the evil one comforted me. And that is why the Word of God is so powerful, my dear brothers and sisters. And that is why it's important for us to be in a relationship with the Lord. Because if the Lord calls, if the Lord speaks to us, if we have no relationship with Him, we won't be able to recognize His voice. Today, as Jesus tells Peter, someone else will put a belt around you and take you where you would rather not go. Jesus is giving Peter the opportunity for repentance. And you know that these three times when Jesus asked Peter, do you love me, is to compensate for the times or to give Peter a chance for the three times he had denied Jesus, right? And Peter exuded the love and said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus gave the commandment, or, or Jesus gave the command to Peter, feed my lamb, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. And Peter recognized that and that's how we got our first pope. And how did he feed? He wasn't giving, going around giving food. He was feeding through his leadership, through his governance, through putting things in order well at that time. And today, leaders of the church, our cardinal, the pope, the bishops, the priests, we are too trying to make things, put things in order. But we can't do it on our own. We need the Holy Spirit. And that is why we are here this evening to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Holy Spirit, who has already been present at our baptism and our confirmation but we need to call out on the Spirit day in and day out. Why? St. Philip Neri himself realized or taught his people that the Spirit of God was not a force, but rather a person. And that is why it's important for us to be in a relationship with the Holy Spirit of God. Day in and day out, be in that relationship with Him because the Holy Spirit can guide us to see to us, see to things around us, and most importantly, protect us from the evil one. That's what we pray every time in the Lord's Prayer, right? We need to pray for that kind of protection. St. Philip had this relationship with the Holy Spirit, so much so that he was able to even exude that joy. He lived in the 16th century, and there was a big plague in the middle of Italy. He came from Florence or Firenze. Because of the plague, he came south to Rome. And when he came to Rome, he saw so many young men idle walking in the streets and not knowing what to do. He began to give meaning and purpose into their lives, telling them about prayer, telling them, uh, making jokes with them to help them to, eat, to win their hearts over to the Lord. Some of them went for confession and we read in the stories of St. Philip Neri that he even gave penances to his penitents by making them carry his cat. cat. They will walk the streets of Rome carrying his cat just to real, make them realize, hey, well, the sin that I committed, was it worth it for this? 
it was to make fun. But at the same time, he brought joy, he brought meaning. And all this was because he had this devotion to the Holy Spirit. He prayed so hard to the Spirit of God that his work, his ministry, might be able to bring glory and praise to God. The Lord Jesus is asking each and every one of us again, do you love me? And before you can answer readily, my dear sisters and brothers, look at the consequences. If we really love the Lord, be prepared for a trial. Be prepared to go to places where we would rather not go, to come out of our comfort zones, to be ready for challenges and battles. And St. Philip had showed us the way. He prayed, he won people over, and he began to found a congregation called the Oratorians. If you go to Rome, to the center of Rome today, the church of Chiesa Nuova, which is where the Oratorian church is, you can go up to the second floor, you can see the room where they preserve of where Philip himself had lived, his slept, and even his rope, his berry was also all kept there. This is just a, few, a few hundred meters away from the church where St. Ignatius of Loyola would also have his items preserved for people, for pilgrims to go and pray and to look at how they live their lives, a simple life. Celebrating this, Saint, uh, this memorial of St. Philip Neri, my dear brothers and sisters, we are reminded of the quality, the kind of discipleship that we have. Are we just following blindly? Or do we really recognize what it means to love the Lord? Yes, we want to be in a relationship with the loving and mighty God, but this loving God will always be with us if we are faithful to Him because He's always praying for us, guiding us, and showing us the way that only He can guide us to. And if we can follow obediently to Him, my dear brothers and sisters, what a mighty celebration we can have this coming Pentecost because the Spirit of God wants to have willing collaborators to fulfill God's kingdom here on earth. The Spirit of God wants to plant that flame of fire, the tongue of fire now over our heads so that we can spread that message, especially to those who need to hear about the mercy, the love and the forgiveness of God dearly. Are we willing, members? Are we willing to be collaborators with the Spirit of God? Finally, are we truly in love with this God of ours? Amen. Let us sing our offertory hymn, These Alone Are Enough.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, we ask that by the example of St. Philip, we may always give ourselves cheerfully for the glory of your name in the service of our neighbour, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Philip Neri, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it, to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with your, his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain the inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with, the ble with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Philip Neri, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and, all, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Jesus 
Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that in imitation of St. Philip, we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we just have to thank Father Valerian for coming today and preaching to, to us. Thank you. Thank you. So we would like to thank those who have organized this tridium and those who have helped in the preparations and the service, the altar service, the hospitality ministers, the Eucharistic ministers, the clickers, the choir and all. So we would like to thank all of you for making this possible. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as we conclude our celebration, let us devote ourselves to Jesus Christ and to Christ alone. Christ is risen, hallelujah. Once again, hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So thank you for all being here. 